Today we continue to look at some of the additional features that are available in Marlin with M600 filament change. Filament change is a very handy feature of Marlin that I enable on most of my machines. It's not available by default, you do have to go in and make some configuration changes to get it set up, but once you do, you can use the M600 command via a terminal window or your G code to pause the printer, kick the filament out, wait for you to load more filament, and then it will resume exactly where it left off. So let's head into Marlin and see how to get it configured, and then I'll show you an example of how M600 works. So we'll open up Marlin that's already configured for my machine. We'll go into the Marlin folder and we'll head down to the Marlin INO file. You will have to have the Arduino IDE to be able to edit this project, but as always, links to Marlin and the IDE are in the description below. Since I have all this installed, we'll go ahead and double click on the Marlin INO file. And to enable filament change, you want to head over to the configuration underscore ADV.h tab. You can hit Control F to enable find and then look for M600, or you can just scroll down until you find the M600 block of code. Here's the settings that you'll need to adjust to enable the filament change command. First thing we'll do is we'll uncomment define advanced pause feature. So the first line you come to that you can define is pause park retract feed rate. This is how fast the filament will be retracted before it heads to the pause location. The second line is pause park retract length. This is how much filament will be retracted before it heads to the pause position. Now we come down to filament change load feed rate. When you issue an M600 command, there are two events that happen. First is the filament change load, and then it does an advanced pause extrude. The filament change load is actually pulling the new filament in, so it's the quicker, longer movement. Advanced pause extrude is a slower movement that makes sure that the nozzle is primed with a new color or just your new roll of filament. For filament change load feed rate, by default it's set to 6, that's how fast it's going to bring in the new filament. I find that that default is fine. Then filament change load length is set to 0 by default. This is how much filament it's actually going to pull in in the initial fast movement while loading the filament. For most direct derive extruders, 0 is just fine, but for this Prusa clone extruder body that I use, I like to set this to 2. The initial fast movement will bring in 2 millimeters of filament. If you're using a Bowden system, you're going to want to set this up a lot higher so that you can completely fill the Bowden tube when loading a new spool. Then we come to Advanced Pause Extrude Feed Rate. This is how fast the filament will move when it's actually priming the hot end. It just has to be slower than Filament Change Load Feed Rate. Then Advanced Pause Extrude Length. This is how many millimeters of filament it's going to push through the hot end to prime it. 50 is the default. I find that works pretty well for most extruder hot end setups. Pause Park Nozzle Timeout will actually turn the heater to the hot end off if you haven't changed the filament out within a certain amount of seconds. 45 is the default, and that's probably a safe setting to use, just so your heater doesn't remain on for a long period of time. Filament Change Number of Alert Beeps. If your speaker is configured in Marlin, it will alert you this many times that the filament needs to be changed. 5 is the default. I found it can be rather annoying, so adjust this how you like. Then pause, park, no stepper timeout. I encourage you to leave this enabled because if the steppers time out, sometimes they can lose steps and then they'll forget where they need to go back to. Then we come down to park head on pause. This is commented out by default, but I find that it's much better to use this than it is to pause your filament over your print because you're going to get some ooze. So comment this out and I'll show you how to further set this up in a moment. And the last option is home before filament change. I leave this commented out because I've had problems with it losing track of where the print was. But basically what this will do, before it goes to your park position, it will hit all of your end stops to make sure it's at home, and then head to the park position. Now we need to head to configuration.h and configure the park position. Then we'll do Control F again to find, and search for nozzle park. So if you enable the nozzle park feature like I did in the M600 configuration, you'll also have to enable this feature. So we'll uncomment define nozzle park feature, and then we'll need to specify some of these variables. So now we need to adjust the nozzle park point. This is actually where it's going to move the hot end when it does the pause and park. By default, the park point is set at X minimum position plus 10 and Y max position negative 10, with a 20 millimeter height on the Z. So that's roughly in this area right here. 
I don't care for that park position. I would much rather have the nozzle park right here. I find that most times this position will keep your nozzle from passing over your print while it's parking. So to get it in the park position that I prefer, I'm going to change X min to X max and negative 10. This will stop the carriage 10 millimeters from its maximum X position, just to keep it from crashing into the side of the carriage. Then for Y, I'll change it to Y min position and change it to plus 10. This should bring the bed to about 10 millimeters away from the Y end stop. The Z at 20 millimeters usually works fine for me. I just leave that default. Nuzzle park XY feed rate is set at 100. This is how fast the X and Y carriage will move while parking. Nozzle park Z feed rate is set at 5. This is how fast it will move the Z up while parking. These defaults are usually fine for me. Something to note while setting your park position, you will have to have your X and Y bed size set somewhat close to get your park position to be accurate. My machine has an X of 250 and a Y of 210, so that should make the park position somewhat close. If your X and Y minimums are different than zero, meaning your hot end is actually off the bed when it's at its minimum position, you'll have to adjust these accordingly. The park position settings use these values as variables. Now we have all our configuration options changed. We can do a verify to make sure we didn't make any mistakes. And if the verification was successful, you can go to tools, make sure you're on the right board, make sure you've got the right processor and you're on the right COM port, and then you can hit upload. I'm going to start a print. So we're about halfway through our Benchy, and let's say we start to run out of filament, or we just feel like the top half of the Benchy needs to be a new color. We can enter an M600 command from your terminal of choice. The printer will pause, go to its Z height for its park position, head to its park position, retract the filament, It will beep letting you know the printer is paused. We'll remove this filament. We'll load our new filament. We'll hit the button on the LCD display. We'll wait for the filament to load. It will ask us if we're ready to resume the print or we need to extrude some more. We'll check and make sure the color looks clear to the new color and it does. So we'll go ahead and resume the print. The printer will go right back to where it left off printing, printing with the new roll of filament or the new color. And there's your two colored Vinci created with a manually entered M600 command. Or if you want your G code to process the M600 command for you at a certain layer height, you can either enter that M600 command into your G code file manually, or you can use the online Prusa tool to insert that M600 command. All you have to do is have a pre-sliced G-code file. We'll upload our G-code. We'll click add a color change. And then we'll enter the layer height where we'd like the color change to be performed. You can enter as many color changes as you'd like. To help you decide what layer you'd like the color change on, you can usually preview the layers in your slicer. For this example, I'll head into Slick3R. After the file has been sliced, we'll go to the preview tab and then you can scan layer by layer to figure out where you'd like your color change. Let's say I want the color to change to a different color at layer 19. We'll head back to the Prusa tool. We'll enter 19 for a layer. It will move the slider to confirm that you're at layer 19, and then you can download the G-code. Then you can take this new downloaded G-code file that already contains your M600 process and print it from your SD card or your Octoprint server or wherever you like to print from. Just for reference, let's take a look at this new G-code file that we just downloaded. We'll open it up with Notepad++, and let's search for the M600 command. So the website tool entered the M600 command where you told it to at that layer change. And there you go. Now you can use M600 every time you need to change to a new roll of filament, or creating some pretty cool multi-layered colored prints. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, consider giving it a thumbs up or subscribe to my channel. If not, leave your thoughts in the comments below. And as always, thanks for watching.